Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can customize your outdoor space to fit your style on a budget. I'm going to be showing you 10 different DIYs, all that are totally customizable to fit whatever color scheme or theme that you're doing in your outdoor space. Whether your outdoor space is big or small, these DIYs are perfect for any space. I'm doing a tropical theme, so there's going to be a lot of pinks, golds, blues, and greens. But again, you can customize any of these DIYs to your liking. Before we get into the DIYs, I wanna take a moment and thank Cricut for sponsoring today's video. I've been using the Cricut Explore Air 2 for several years and I absolutely love that machine and all of the home decor projects I've made with it, but I wanted to push my crafting capabilities a little further, so earlier this year I purchased the Cricut Maker and it has allowed me to do just that. The Maker has all of the capabilities of the Explore Air 2 and much, much more. It can accurately cut over 300 materials, from delicate materials like crepe paper, tool and washi sheet to thicker materials like basswood, mat board, and leather. I think what excites me the most about the Maker is the rotary blade for precision cutting on fabric materials like cotton, denim, faux fur, and felt, as well as the expandable suite of tools that make crafting possibilities endless. The quick swap technology makes it easy to switch out different tool tips. Simply snap them into the quick swap housing and the Cricut Maker is ready to go. With the Cricut Maker, you can cut, draw, score, deboss, engrave, and create perforations and wavy lines. What's even more exciting about the Quick Swap technology is Cricut's dedication to expanding the suite of tools so the machine is continually building in value. It is truly the ultimate smart cutting machine, and I can't wait to see what new tools are in store for this machine. So without further ado, let's get into the first DIY. I wanted to make some cute reusable napkins for my patio tablescape, so I'm going to be using this fabric that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to start this project off by going into Cricut Design Space and creating a new canvas. Once I do that, I go over to the Shapes toolbar and select the square shape. Then I resize it to nine by nine inches and duplicate it seven times to create eight squares since each napkin will have two pieces that will be bonded together. Once I have my eight squares, I'm going to click make it and set my material to cotton. Then I click continue and design space prompts me to place the rotary blade in clamp B. But before I do that, I need to prepare my material for cutting by roughly cutting my fabric sheets into fourths with a rotary cutting blade. You will need two rolls of this material from Dollar Tree to create eight napkins. Then I load it pretty side down on my fabric cutting mat and swap out my fine point blade with the rotary cutting tool. I then press the load unload button and then the go button. If you're terrible at cutting straight lines, the Cricut machine does it perfectly, so that is why I am using this to make my napkins. Then I just unload my mat and peel my fabric carefully away from the mat and take off the excess fabric and I have a perfect nine by nine cut. I repeat this process for the other seven squares. Next, I set my easy press to 300 degrees for 15 seconds. I stack my fabric squares on the heat press mat and preheat my fabric squares four at a time while also ironing out any wrinkles. Then I take two squares and place them on the heat press mat with the pretty sides facing each other. I'm using this no sew heat bond, which is perfect if you aren't great at sewing like I am and you like a quick project. You can find this product at your local Walmart or craft store. I just place the strips along the top and sides of the bottom square and then heat press the two fabric pieces together with my easy press. Then I flipped my napkin inside out and used one more piece of heat bond tape at the bottom, making sure to tuck the ends and corners inward to match the seam on the other three sides of the napkin, and then heat pressing one more time. Then I just used my scissors and trimmed off any strings that were left behind. For DIY number two, I'm going to be making a tabletop fire pit or candle centerpiece. I'm using this metal bucket I got in a Michaels grab box last year and I just used some masking tape to create three stripes or lines all the way around the bucket. Then I spray painted it with this gold metallic spray paint by Rust-Oleum, but you of course can customize this to be any color you want. Then I just removed the tape to reveal these beautiful crisp lines and then headed over to my potting bench 
where I turn this into a planter. I'm using three different candle votives from Dollar Tree for this project, but you can also use the fuel tanks from Dollar Tree in the cooking section. Just keep in mind whatever fire feature you're using, plastic and fire do not mix, so I would not recommend using faux succulents for this project. I'm using real succulent clippings from my backyard and the leaves are naturally full of water. You could also use Dollar Tree's decorative rocks instead of succulents and place your fire feature on top of that. With the Cricut Maker, you can create a wide variety of projects like wooden puzzles, ornaments, and jewelry, as well as make your own custom gifts and fabric projects. I have been excited to start making my own custom earrings and fabric covered journals. Cricut Design Space is stocked full of free cut files and ready to make projects that are easy to get started. And if you become an access member, you get access to thousands of cut files and ready to make projects. And you're gonna see quite a few of those cut files in Design Space in some of these DIYs. For DIY number three, I'm making these custom coasters with my last name initial on them. I'm going to be using these coaster blanks and infusible ink sheets by Cricut for this project. In Design Space, I'm going to create the cut for my four coasters by selecting the circle from the shapes toolbar. Then I resize my circle to the diameter of the infusible ink coasters, which is 3.6. Next, I select the text and type my letter H, and I'm using the Cricut font called Prague, and I'm just changing it to white so you can see it better. I resize the letter to my liking and center it in the circle. Then I use the slice function by dragging over both the letter and the circle and then clicking the button slice. This is going to cut out the letter so the white surface will show in my design. Then I duplicate the design three times, so now I have four cuts. Then I click the Make It button and select the Infusible Ink Transfer Sheets from the Materials menu. I load my Infusible Ink Transfer Sheet on my standard grip mat, pretty side up, load it into the machine, and then press the Go button. After I unload the mat, I flip it over and peel the mat away from the transfer sheet. This is going to protect both the mat and whatever paper or transfer sheet that you're working with. It helps it prevent from curling. And then I'm just going to trim off the excess and save it for another project. I remove the circle cuts from the sheet as well as carefully remove the letters from the circle. And I'm gonna save those letters for a project another day as well. Here is where the magic happens. I have done so many infusible ink projects and I still get excited every time I do one because it's just the coolest thing. I set my easy press to 400 degrees for 240 seconds. And if you're ever unsure of what heat settings to use for different materials and projects, you can go to cricut.com slash heat guide and plug in your material and base material and it will tell you the heat settings as well as give you a prep and care guide. So for my infusible ink coasters, I just follow the stacking order and preparation steps on the heat guide and let the magic happen. When the timer is up, I remove my heat press and let the coaster cool completely before handling it. And look how gorgeous these turned out. They're not only great for your outdoor space, but also a great DIY gift for a wedding or housewarming gift. For DIY number four, I'm going to make this infusible ink pillow using the navy blue color in that infusible ink transfer sheet pack from the coaster DIY, as well as this Cricut infusible ink pillow throw cover. I'm going to be using a pre-made design in Cricut Design Space. I just searched stay a while and I chose this design from the images tab on the left hand side of the canvas. I created a template using a square and adjusted the dimensions to be the same size of the pillow for reference. Once I'm happy with the size, I delete the square since it is for reference only and click make it. I click the mirror button because I'm going to be flipping over the carrier sheet and ironing it on the pillow. Then I just click continue, load the infusible ink sheet on the mat and let my Cricut cut out my design. After I remove the mat from the machine, I flip it over and remove the mat from the transfer sheet and then do a process called weeding. 
I am using the Cricut weeding tool to remove all of the unwanted scraps working from the inside out. I preheat the Easy Press to 385 degrees for 60 seconds and place a piece of cardstock inside the pillow cover to prevent the infusible ink from transferring through to the other side. Then I use a lint roller to remove any unwanted pieces of fabric. I place a piece of butcher paper on top of the cover and preheat the cover for 15 seconds. Once that is done, I place my transfer sheet down, followed by the butcher paper, then the Easy Press while applying light pressure for 60 seconds. If your design is bigger than the heat plate, simply heat press the areas not covered in the first press again. Then remove the transfer sheet while warm. I love making my own pillow covers because throw pillows can be expensive and take up a lot of space. So this is a really good option if you're on a budget and you don't have a lot of room to store a bunch of throw pillows. For DIY number five, I'm making this flip-flop and toy bucket for my patio. My family's always leaving flip-flops and backyard toys all over the place during the summer, myself included, so I thought it'd be cute to give them their own designated storage space. I'm going to be using this giant bucket from Dollar Tree as well as two of these grass hula skirts. I will be making a decal for the bucket with some Cricut Premium Permanent Vinyl. I made a template for sizing reference by making a rectangle and sized it to the workable area on the front of the bucket. I found this really cute pre-made design and design space by searching life is better in flip flops. Once I was happy with the size, I deleted the square and hit the ungroup button to change the colors of the design and then clicked make it and chose vinyl as my material. Now, as you can see here, the Cricut has organized the cuts by color. It's telling me to load the white vinyl for the first cut and then the pink vinyl for the second cut. I ended up using pink for the strap and a blue for the base because I actually ran out of white vinyl. So if you don't use the exact colors that you selected in your design, no worries, the Cricut will still organize the separate cuts as long as you know what colors you want to use, if that makes sense. Right here, I'm just trimming off just the right amount of vinyl I need with my Cricut trimmer. I did this for the first cut as well, and I placed the vinyl exactly where it shows on the mat on the cut screen in Design Space. Next, I weed out my design and use some transfer tape to apply it to my decal. Then I use my scraper tool to burnish the transfer tape to the decal and then remove the backing of the vinyl from the transfer tape. Then I apply my decal to the bucket, burnish with my scraper tool, and then peel away the transfer tape. Next, I take my hot glue and press the top of the grass skirts all the way around the lip of the bucket, working in small sections. Now the bucket is going to resemble a blonde cousin it from Adam's family, but we're going to give him a haircut and cut just above the decal on the front all the way around. If you do decide to do this project, you can save all of those extra pieces that you cut off for other crafts. I just threw mine in a big Ziploc bag. I wanted to make some decorative handles with some of the excess skirt that I hadn't cut, so I taped the string to my desk, split the strings in half, and braided them. Then I took my two braids and turned them into handles by using one braid for each side. I just took the bottom of the braid, pulled it through the handle, then hot glued the top of the braid to the bucket, and then looping the bottom of the braid over, hot gluing that to the top of the braid and then trimming off the excess. Then I took the excess piece I trimmed off and glued that over where the loop connects to the bucket for a more finished look. You can of course line the entire inside of this bucket with a braid or do some other trim, but I decided we were more than likely going to be a little rough with this thing when we throw our flip flops and toys in it this summer. So I opted just to leave the inside alone so it wouldn't get ruined. For DIY number six, I'm going to be making these beautiful candle center pieces for my patio tablescape. I'm using three of these tabletop tiki torches from Dollar Tree and three of these votives also from Dollar Tree. Now I had purchased both the white and gold set of the little candle holders, but I decided to paint these ones gold as well to match the color scheme I'm going for. I also spray painted the tiki torches after I removed the fuel tanks and I'm using the same spray paint 
in that metallic gold as I did in DIY number two. After the torch stands and votives dried, I used some twine from Dollar Tree and my hot glue gun to secure the twine around the votive and the stand. I used some heavy duty snips to trim off the excess prawns after I sat the votives in place. These votives are quite heavy, so they do a good job of sort of sinking into place and not really moving around. And here's how I styled them on my patio table. I wanted to make some custom drinking glasses to match my tropical theme, so that's what I'll be making for DIY number seven. I picked up four of these stemless wine glasses from Dollar Tree and made a decal in design space with the flamingo image and then typed let's flamingo and chose a pretty font. There are a ton of pre-made templates already loaded into design space, but I prefer to make my own with basic shapes. Once I made my design and sized it to my liking, I grouped all of the elements together, clicked attach, and then duplicated the design three times. I'm using the same vinyl and decal method as the flip flop bucket for this DIY. After I weeded my designs and applied the transfer tape, I cleaned the glass with a rubbing alcohol swab and let it dry. Then I just applied my permanent vinyl decal to the glasses using my fingers and scraper tool to burnish it onto the glass. Then I carefully remove the transfer tape. To clean the glasses after each use, just use some warm soapy water and a non-abrasive sponge to clean, and they should last a very long time. I wanted to make my husband some hot pads for his smoker, so that is DIY number eight. I picked up these hot pads from the Dollar Tree. Now these are not meant to use over an open flame like a grill, but I just made these so my husband can pull out hot trays out of the smoker cabinet and then place those hot trays on the table. I'm using the same decal design method and design space as the previous DIYs. The only difference is I'm going to be mirroring my image and selecting the iron-on material instead of permanent vinyl because I'm going to be ironing these on the hot pads. After my designs are cut and weeded, I set my easy press to 315 degrees for 30 seconds, prep and preheat my materials, and then heat press each one. When the transfer sheet is cool enough to touch, I slowly peel off the heat transfer sheet. For DIY number nine, I'm going to be making this decorative piece that can also double as a bottle cap holder. I picked up this glass block from Michaels with a coupon and it's perfect for this project because it has an opening at the top. I'm also going to be using this gold textured premium vinyl by Cricut. In Design Space, I'm going to create, you guessed it, a square template that is the same size as my glass block. Then I'm going to go over to images and search for a monstera leaf. I find two that I like and add them to the canvas. Then I duplicate each one a few times. Then I start placing them around the square, hanging them off to the side a little bit because I want to put some words in the center. So I select both the square and the leaf, and then I click the slice button and drag away the excess piece that I don't want. You can only slice two images at a time, so make sure when you're dragging over your design that you're only selecting two images at a time. I do this all the way around the square until it's complete.
Next, I'm going to drag over the square or template and delete it by clicking on the X in the top left corner. And then I'm going to delete all of the other cut pieces I don't want as well. Then I'm going to add some text and size it and center it to my liking, group my design, change the color to gold, and then click attach. Clicking the attach button is very important because if you don't, it will scatter your design all over the mat. But if you forget to click the attach button before clicking continue, no worries, cancel, go back and attach your design. And sometimes I forget to do that, but it's not a big deal. Then I'm just going to choose my material, which is that textured premium vinyl, load my mat and then tell my Cricut to cut. Once my machine is done cutting, I unload the mat and then I begin weeding out my design. For thicker materials, I like to weed directly on the mat. I don't like to do it with thinner materials because I don't want to damage my mat. Then I add my transfer tape, burnish it with my scraper tool, flip over the mat and remove both the carrier sheet and transfer tape from the mat. And then I go back and peel away the carrier sheet from the transfer tape. I prep my surface with an alcohol swab, let it dry, and then I apply my decal to the glass. I use my scraper tool again to make sure the decal is adhered to the glass, and I also run my fingers over the edges of the glass to make sure that the edge of my decal is gripping the glass. And then I just remove the transfer tape. I use these wired LED lights from Dollar Tree to illuminate the glass block. The lights fit perfectly through the little hole in the top of the silicone plug on the top of the glass block. And for DIY number 10, I'm going to be making a stacking herb planter for my patio. I use three of these stacking pots from the Dollar Tree and I picked up some rosemary, basil, and cilantro from Walmart as well as a pot of marigolds. The herbs I found on a discount rack in the garden section because they were actually dying. They just needed a little water and some shade, so I rehabbed them and they were as good as new. I just figured out the placement of where I wanted them to sit and began potting them in their new home. I separated the marigolds and threw those in there as well. They are good pest deterrents in your garden. I left some open spaces to plant more herbs later on. I wanted to make some cute plant labels for the herbs, so I used this pack of chalkboard tags and three large popsicle sticks from the Dollar Tree, as well as some heat transfer vinyl from Cricut. I actually ironed these onto the wood because I ran out of white permanent vinyl. I just cut out the labels on my machine, preheat my Easy Press to 300, and then preheated the wood for five seconds and then pressed my labels for 40 seconds. I actually didn't know ironing heat transfer vinyl on wood was a thing until about a year ago. And I just think it's the coolest thing and I can't get enough of it. When they were cool enough to touch, I just removed the heat transfer sheet and they were ready to be assembled. I just used some wood glue to glue the stick to the tag and then used the twine that came with the tags to make a cute bow to cover up the hole at the top of the heart. That is it for this DIY video. A big thank you to Cricut again for partnering with me on this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know by giving me a thumbs up. I really hope this video gave you guys some ideas of how you can customize your outdoor space on a budget this summer. If you do decide to recreate any of these DIYs, tag me on Instagram. I would love to see your creations. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out for more crafty content for me. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.